That's recording. Thanks for coding. The sound's hooked up to... Oh yeah, I can see it on there. Thanks for coding. Happy days. Rugby! Rugby. Cheers, we start with a dink today. We won! We did win! We won the rugby! Who would have thought it? By a big margin. Say hello to the people, Mark. How's everybody going? We're back at Tony's house. again. Yeah, we're here. It's a house. It is. And Believe it here. or not. We've got a microphone and some cameras. Beers. Beers are going. We've watched some rugby. We're in a celebratory mood. It's good. I do remember saying on the last podcast we had that I was pretty sure the All Blacks were going to bounce back with a 50-point win. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah, you I'm said that sure word I for word. word. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Watch, yeah. Rewind the footage. Yeah, you definitely didn't say that. Argentina were the favourites. So you, you didn't say you'd like to... You'd I like didn't say that. To, no, no, no. You said you'd like to see Argentina say go that. on and win it. Yeah, I said, look, I was... I think what I said was, I think the All Blacks are going to win, but I say that with no certainty whatsoever. Right. And you know what? If they played next week, I would say the exact same thing. True. Because so That's much, just the way it is right now. Yeah, the All Blacks form right now is like a prostitute's knickers. <laughs> Up and down. A few people have said, we are the new France, and that you just don't know what All Blacks team is going to turn 100%. Up. We're the new France, and they're the new All Blacks. Yeah, basically. <sighs> How did this happen? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. But you mentioned this is a podcast. It is a podcast. Spotify. Hold on, I'm going to move this slightly. Okay. Spotify. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Google, Google Podcasts, Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you find podcasts, you what? might find us. What's Stitcher? Stitcher is uh, what I get when I run too far and <laughs> I've drank too much water. I uh, know, uh, sorry, Stitcher is a podcast platform. Oh, cool. Yeah. I think the only one that I struggled with was one called Pandora. Pandora didn't like me for some reason. Okay. So if we're on Pandora, that's great, but I, I struggle with that. But even so. all the other majors, we're there. Okay. We made it. So if you don't want to look at the faces yeah. or the beers. You know what surprised me about the feedback from last week? What's that? I mentioned briefly in the in the beginning of the podcast last week that, yeah, if you wanted to listen to this while you're taking a poop, you could. And people said, <laughs> you know your audience. Yeah, exactly. I saw that. There were a lot of people saying, oh my God, I was literally taking a <laughs> when you said that. So, to all those people listening to this, taking a poop, yeah, grind that one out for all of us. If you got a wee bit of, I don't know, the old constipation, <laughs> pop some prunes and pop chuck this on. T- two cents gets distracted and prunes. <laughs> Great exactly. formula for six. So, we watch the games. I should, did. should we start with the Springboks in Australia first? Because we've got a wee bit of a tendency to go hard on the All Blacks. Let's park the All Blacks for just a second. Park them for a second. That's going to be tough for me, but yeah, okay, let's do it. There was a turnaround. Oh, massive. Turnaround on both ends. You got your wish, and Malcolm Marks not only started, but if I'm not mistaken, he played, I think, 80 minutes. Well, I had a word with Nina Bar, and uh, I said, look, what you're playing at just ain't working for me. And he took me seriously, and look, it paid dividends. Big time. Listen to old Tony from Distracted Sports, it, it turned out well for them. And who would have thought, starting the best hook in the world, it's actually really good for your team. Paid really good results, didn't it? Yeah, incredible. And, uh, they, when they had a few guys step up, I mean, Jaden Hendrickson, who's their halfback, he yeah. replaced Faf the Clerk. Faf, I don't think he was injured. I'm pretty sure they just dropped him. Yeah. And they said, here you go, young man. He played very well. He kept the the pack moving forward. I like Williams at number ten too. I thought his he was, goal kicking is the only. I liked his footwork. Yeah, I for thought, sure. I thought he was very nifty on his feet. The goal kicking is one of those things like we've seen with Buffelli. Like just work on it, son, yeah. and you know that's probably going to come round for you. That's right. And, but he was, yeah, he looked dynamic. Playing confidently. Yeah, I liked I liked the cut of his jib. He's a bit of a interesting one because I think for the Stormers he plays mostly twelve. Oh, and no. then for the Springboks, he's mostly played 15. I mean... I Very more wanger like I thought. Yeah, I guess yeah. in terms of his footwork and his, um, his attacking guy, he likes taking the ball to the line. He's an yeah. exciting player. Which is nice. Dude. It's nice to see for South Africa. And so it's interesting. I can see so many great attacking threats in that back line. That's right. But the plan still isn't an attacking plan. And it's weird to see, you know, all these all the box kicking, all the grinding out victories. Yeah. But when you give these amazing athletes just a little chance bit of... Chance to unleash. Just a chance. I'd love to see, like, who am I to say? That's been working for the South Africans for a very long time. So... I think when Rashi took over, he said, we're going to pull things back from the Alistair Kutsia days. And he was trying to mold them into some kind of different team. Rashi said, no, we're going to go back to the, 
the fundamentals of, of Springbok rugby, and mm. he had relatively immediate success. Is it the fundamentals of Spring? The fundamentals of Springbok rugby yeah. is tough, Good hard, tough winning the winning the collision and all that sort of jazz. But this yeah. whole you know box kicking down the tram lines, mm. you know, a hundred thousand times a game. That's pretty modern stuff. That's not traditional anything, True. you know. So I don't know. It's it was a good game to watch for the most part. Mm. Jeepers Cannon, whatever his name is. What, Moody? Moody. Gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know who I thought he looked a lot like? Who did he look a lot like? Go mm. on. He looked a lot like Sparkles McFabulous for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's an upcoming reference to yeah. a Distracted Video. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's Israel Folau. I thought he looked a lot like him. Like, just moving, looking like he was moving slowly, but moving quicker Fast, than yeah. everybody else. And that... How good he was in the in the air. Big tall guy can get very, airborne. Very tall guy just sort of hangs up there. Yeah, freakish athlete. Another one who's I mean Israel played fullback and wing. Yeah. I mean Moody does the same Fingers thing. Fingers crossed he's not a bigger wanker, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure he's not. Only 19 years old as well. I know. What were you doing when you were 19? Masturbating. <laughs> a lot. Not jumping Furious. for eyeballs then. <laughs> <laughs> jumping for a different kind of eyeballs. <laughs> That's what I was doing. Yeah. I think our mood has, has been up yeah, exactly. for, uh, with the All Blacks at the yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah, totally. But oh. um, yeah, I mean, for a guy to come in in his debut, I mean, they've got Colby out injured, they've got Aronsa suspended, they've got, uh, who's their other winger who's injured? Anyway, he's, he's like, yeah. he's not their first choice guy, mm. steps up, gets a try on his debut, just looked the business. He really did. He really did. Just world class and like... He was not afraid to take them on on his debut against Mar- uh, Corin Betty, who That's right. looked like a freak the Had week a blind before. the week before, yeah. Hundred percent. It's it's amazing. What happened to the Aussies? <sighs> they were flat. Yeah, like a lot like the Argentinians just look like a different sort just of side. No momentum. It's it, it kind of shows like if you're just off a couple of percent, mm. or if there are just a couple of moments in a game that don't go your way, it can swing the whole momentum of a game. They finally looked like they were getting some momentum. I think. They were probably two scores down at the time. Yeah, it was and, 17 threes. And yeah. then you're thinking one more, well, one try, convert a try, and then, man, you're back into it's game on. Yeah. And then the TMO, Brendan Pickerel. Oh, he, Alan Alatoa's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That irritated me. Why? But because they had like six advantages there. Mm. You know, like the there was repeated infringements over and over and over again against the South Africans. They were on their yellow card warning at that That's stage right. too. And it, it, it so it got to a point where, and they had a penalty... This was going to be the moment you felt like they were just about to crack them. Right. And then, you know, that could have been 10-17 with 20 minutes to play or to play for. Game right. on. Yeah. But, you know, they, you know, the penalties reversed, you know, after all those advantages, all that sort of stuff. And because he said, look, it's not foul. It's not a super foul play. It's not worthy of yellow card. There yeah. is head contact and all that sort of thing. Then they finally take the penalty. And then I think it was uh, Sia Khaleesi was cleaning out a ruck. Or doing something very similar. Or I think he was tackling a man who was just coming down from getting a high ball. Right. And he clipped, I can't remember who it was, in the head. Right. They reviewed it again on TMO. But what the TMO said was, yes, there was head contact, but he was sinking. But there's nothing doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was already How, quite what was, low. What yeah. was the difference? He was very, very low in that clean out. It's one and of those I was kind like, of much of a muchness ones. Much of a muchness, but like you would have liked much of a muchness on That's the right. other end too. That's right. Like, and I thought that was a real sliding doors moment. The though. referee kind of tried to soften the blow by saying, "We are reversing the penalty," but you've they're, they're still on the yellow card warning, mm. as if that was going to kind of appease them. But I think mm. they've really even mentioned that moment in the press conference to say like that that just killed any hundred percent that was, kind of flow they had because that yeah, the crowd was starting to build back into it, and that was that was the big moment of the whole game. Yeah. But other than that, look, South Africa definitely deserved to win that. That game. And they seemed just quietly to have a bit of a bone to pick with oh. the Australians. I've never in recent times seen so many guys just so fired up. Mpimpi screaming at Shut up! Shut up! Shut then, up! Um, Shut up! Vili LaRue dropping some F bombs. Yeah. And uh, then it all culminated with the, with the Mpimpi yellow card, which was with a. Evan Hitzabit and the fire in his eyes. The crazy eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Can we try and reenact that? Uh, no. You play Evan Etzebe. I can't do I'll it. play Alan Alan. I don't, I don't have the crazy eyes. Yeah, you've got to give me the crazy eyes. <laughs> look, look at the eyes. Look at his eyes. It was pretty scary stuff like that. Yeah, he was... Um, 
Yeah. yeah, and then we get to get one of those lovely isn't rugby the greatest sport of all time moments afterwards with them yeah, getting that, each other a beer. That seemed a wee bit staged. It did, didn't it? I'm just but the, the, to be, the, the, the I'm film just... is Alan grabs the beer and goes to hand it to Evan. I think like the media manager guy just tapped Alan Alatone and other things. Are you good with Evan? He's like, yeah, we're sweet. Yeah, he yeah. said, well, can you just grab, give him a beer and yeah, we'll put shake it off, his hand? Yeah, got to get on camera. I think Evan's reactions were look like they were relatively honest. But yeah, it just did feel a bit strange. Yeah, a bit try what not try for what is the word I'm looking for? Contrived. Contrived, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean the beer, be beers after the games, that's a thing. Yeah, that is a thing. And, it's, I, and obviously there was no bad blood for them between the games. But I don't think that takes away from the genuine emotions that were on the field. Like some yeah. people say, no, 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 that wasn't there wasn't any bad blood. I think there was bad oh, blood. Oh yeah, throughout that whole game. Like yeah, yeah. I was not suspecting that coming in. But did that stem from the whole Nick White I Oscar moment? It had to have. Really? Yeah, yeah, they were yeah. really steamed about that. The definitely, old definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they had a point to prove, and um, I just want to point out to all the people who give Mark crap about it, not drinking. Look, oh yeah, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna just gonna. We're stay. getting there. We're getting there, everybody. Cheers. Oh. That's why people listen to podcasts so they can listen to people swallow the floor. <laughs> ASMR stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. What else about that game? Well, I think you, it was entertaining to watch. Yeah. Four tries from the Springboks. Four tries from the Springboks. Still, like as I said before, I would really love to see a little bit more expansive stuff in the back line. Four tries not enough for you. But they were kind of off kicks and they were just here, there and scrapping. It was away. good to see Hendricks uh, trying to move the game along quickly. And there was a few times where the Springboks took quick line-out throws, where traditionally they're going to take things slowly yeah. they're going to set for a mall they want to win a penalty they want to yeah. piggyback their way upfield whereas this game they're like no we're going to keep the tempo up higher in the first try they get a penalty and Hendrickson just takes it quickly yeah. and then he gets tackled just short of the line and then like they pop the ball out to um, to Evan who gets it to Damon Delende so that was kind of tempo yeah 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 but I hustle to it I think the added uh, fire in the game probably added to their game essentially mm. it took them to a level that they needed to be at Sia Khaleesi I thought was he was phenomenal best game really? he's had for ages I mean he's been he's been good doing the dirty yeah. stuff for a while like he's he was their top tackler going into the but into he, that game but he looked like a world class world class player. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought Monster was fantastic yeah Monster well. was good when he finally gets a start yeah. I mean it's hard was he starting at 7 this week on place to do toy yeah on the blind side yeah. they did the reverse numbers thing Oh, yeah, that confused me. I was yeah, like, is yeah, it yeah. open side? They so, reversed the locks as well. I, really, I never got that. Why is one of... Why well, don't they better numbers? But is there really a difference between the person who plays four and Usually the one five? packs behind the tight head's a bit of a bigger unit. Really? So that writes you more of your Brad Thorns than your Sammy Whitelocks. Even though I think Sammy Whitelock played what we would have five, which is their four. Yeah, this is fascinating. I mean, they, they they swap and like I don't think there's as much of a difference between a four and a five as there is like a six and a seven traditionally because they alternate. A lot yeah. of guys play both, whereas not that many, not as many guys alternate between flags. Well, like, I don't give a rat's who plays four and who plays five. Does anybody right. like? Is there even a name? Because we have you know tight head elusive props, obviously. Mm. That's a big difference. Yeah, and then we've got the halls in the middle, the hookers, the Andrew Halls of this world, and then we. <laughs> <laughs> took me a moment. <laughs> so you got there eventually. Um, but yeah, it, so there's no difference between four and five, apart from you think that the four is a bigger unit. Whoever's packing behind the tight head is usually a bit of a bigger unit. Because they need a little bit a bit more, more grunt on that side. And usually the other guy is the finesse guy. But I mean, there's so many exceptions that, you know. Right. Yeah. Like Lavanini is the one who packs behind the tight head because he's a big oh, human. Right. Right. Guido Petty, bit of a more finesse guy. I'm sorry for Lavanini this weekend, actually. He broke a yellow card record. record but he did it in a crappy way. Did it? Wasn't it? Wasn't red mist? It was just. It was just a teen yellow. Yeah. Oh. Bit disappointing. Sugar. Yeah. Two cents audience. Look at that controlling mm -hmm. this. This one's going on the two cents channel. Oh, what well, should we touch on that? The reason that some people get confused, like, I think we've already confused people Definitely. by how we've posted these. So one week it will be on a Two Cents channel, mm -hmm. and then the following episode will be on my channel. So if, you, if this is episode two for you, then you might have missed episode, genuine episode two, which was on Distracted Sports. Yeah, there's a playlist on mine that has your yours the first okay. episode, and then mine the second. So I'll just, I will have to make the same playlist. Yes. There'll be playlists, everybody. Playlists. If, if Everyone you, loves a playlist. Although, playlists, prunes, all the things that start with P. Yeah, absolutely. Playlists, props. Playlist props and prunes how we go. take shits. <laughs> they all do. But uh, yeah, I think uh, if that's confusing you, 
I'm sorry. Yeah, that's as what I'm sorry. Is. But you can listen to it on a variety of different podcast platforms I hear as well. Podcast, also another piece. So there you oh go. Oh my god. Happy days. Smashing it. Smashing the peas. But um yeah, no, good win for the box. Flips the competition on its head once again. Wow. First win in nine years in Australia. The Aussies can't win in New South Wales to save their lives. I know. What is that? It's like the All Blacks not being able to win in Auckland. Yeah, it's just bizarre. It's crazy. It really really is. I I guess Wellington is our stadium like that. We've got a bad record at Wellington, but not that bad. Not that bad. They've got a losing record. Yeah. Genuinely really bad. Yeah, lovely looking stadium though. Nice. I went to the old one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all right. It was a bit... Yeah. I felt a bit jealous after watching us at freaking FMG Stadium. You know, you I like, like FMG Stadium because you're so close to the yeah, action. Have you been there? I have. I have you sat next to the sideline? Like you're that close to the field. Yeah. If you call someone a name, they're gonna. I went to hear you, 2011. See your face. The game, the most recent game I went to there was the. Tw- so I was waiting a long time ago. 2011 Wales versus Samoa at the Rugby World Cup. Oh nice. Well, good good occasion. The Welsh snuck that one. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I had a Welsh girlfriend at the time. Oh, nice. She would have enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, yeah, she did. She did. She made me wear a stupid uh, sunflower on oh, my head. Oh, nice. I was one of those twats. You know, kind of wanted to cheer for something. Next time, go get the KFC bucket. <laughs> <laughs> KFC bucket on top of the flower? Yeah. Yeah. By the way, if you wear one of those, you're Welsh and you wear one of those flowery hats, you're not a twat. I take that back. He just felt like. But yeah, that means I think the South Africans are somehow in third on the log after that one, just behind oh, their strengths. But essentially, we're on 10 and everyone else is on 9. So the rest of the rankings, it's, yeah, I wouldn't pay much attention to it. Basically, it's all neck and neck. It's absurd at the moment. And I hear that all the coaches and all the fans and everything that I've been seeing and all the comments is like, I just want my team to have consistency. No one's got some consistency no. at the moment. Like... That's what we'd all like, but it makes it bloody exciting. Interesting, yeah, for you sure. You know who will be laughing about all this? The Northern Hemisphere. Like, I think, the more I look at it and look at the, you know, I've got France and the Irish on top, the English bets the Aussies. The, Aussies. Yeah. Um, the Scottish push um, the, the Argentinians right, yeah. really, really close. I, do you think right now Northern Hemisphere rugby is on top? Because I do. It seems like that. Just do a little ASMR for everybody, Humsey. Oh, nice. Oh, that was good. You enjoy that? It does have Come a scout here. Oh, Sorry. Really That's your Irish ro- roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that Irish beer or no? Uh, no, it's an eight wide double scoop stout. Okay. So, a kiwi beer? It's a kiwi beer, but. Do that for sounds? Well, I can't hear anything. You can hear the rain. It's piddling down. It is pissing down here in Auckland. It's miserable. It looks more like a Coke, really, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to. Someone joins halfway, they're going to be like, oh, it's good to see you drinking beers too, cents, but what about that posse drinking coke? <laughs> All right. Where so, okay. I had a, this was the question, like... Oh, Northern Hemisphere. I bet you there were so many people in the Northern Hemisphere who were listening, like, finally, a good question. And then I start talking about my beers. Beers, stuff. stouts. And stouts. And yeah. Okay. I'll be in France at the moment. Ireland, they're looking the business. England... Eddie gets a lot of stick, but he's been kind of tinkering with the squad. He's doing that thing where... He's a mad scientist. He, he's he got this weird like concept. Like We think of Rugby World Cup cycles as four-year deals, yeah. right? So you start building for the next World Cup after the previous one's just gone. Mm-hmm. He's got this weird thing where he's like, no, it's a three-year cycle. So he continues on with his squad after the World Cup, and then when it gets to three years, then he starts making mad changes and starts giving all the young guys a go. So three years... he thinks you peak at three years... He could be right. He might be. He made the final last time. He's made the final with the Aussies, so... But they were so piss poor in that final. They were. Like, they're good against us. They were incredible against us. Bastards? Yes. Yep. Anyway, I think... Yeah. So... But for the most part, you have to say yes for the... I mean, November's obviously going to be the true test, but at the moment, yeah. I mean, Ireland and France are one and two in the world for a reason. And isn't it incredible they've only ever won one World Cup. Yeah, that's the thing. In World Cups, it's all Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. Apart from Clive Woodward. That one time. Apparently, um, what's he up to these days? He's a pundit. And he's not a great pundit. He's a bad he? pundit. He's a really bad pundit. It's like, it sounds like a pundit from like 1987. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Say cliches like, mm, just got to feed the speed out wide. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. He's still kind of stuck in the 2000 no. when did he win 2003. 2003 yeah stuck in the 2000s well he did have that really really overhyped squad from 2005 
with Brian O'Driscoll and that, the Lions tour. Yeah, that Lions that tour. kind of took the the sheen off his coaching. Yeah, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like how Fozzie's taking the sheen off the All Blacks aura. Yeah. But speaking of that, should man, we talk about the All Blacks? Look, he won the bloody thing. Didn't Fifty we? points. This team <sighs> played like a team possessed again, yeah. just like Alice Park. I know. I just don't get it. I really, really don't understand it. They've they've got bipolar. You know, like they're all over the shop in terms of their perform, their performance, their confidence, their mood. Like, I, I thought it was interesting. Like, there was a really good period for Argentina mm. when uh, just before Lavanini, you know, dropped that ball. Right. And then right after Bowden Barrett um, scored at the very end of the game. Right. Like, the 80 minutes in the middle. Not that great. They were pretty dark. They yeah. really, really were poor. Yeah. Um, but they, they just kept on dropping the ball. They a just, lot. I mean, the All Blacks had phenomenal handling given the conditions. Amazing. We're about as bad as we've got outside right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it must have been absolutely piddling down. Yeah. But it was a windy night as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very poor conditions. So, yeah. Uh, amazing handling. The Maybe Blacks, just being um, growing up in these conditions a little bit more. I'm pretty sure it rains in Argentina. I don't know. I've never been to Argentina. Me neither. Tell us, if you're an Argentinian, what's the weather like? Does it rain much? Does it? I bet you get a little bit. You yeah, get a lot. Good meat. They do have great meat. South Africans and uh, Argentinians, known for their meat. Meaty. When I write the distracted sports thing, I make a lot of meat-related puns. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of meat-related Next time you do an Argentina video, you must mention the meat, but also passion. Because every, oh, every pun that works their salt mentions the passion. I, I've never mentioned the passion, passion of the meat. I've never mentioned passion. I've, I've always just mentioned meat. A passion for meat, maybe. I've always mentioned two things when I talk about Argentina. The fact that Lavavini's a psycho and the fact they eat a lot of meat. Basically, that's my punditry on, on, on the Argentines. Mm. Mm. The All Blacks kicked the ball. I don't, well, a lot. Do you think the score flattered the All Blacks? I do think the Argentinians had a couple of good spells. One period in the first half and in the start of the second yeah. half where they got bugger all for it. They the won. last pass just never worked for them. The last pass was always just something, someone like dropped the ball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I know you're saying we thought we kicked better, but there were a couple of opportunities there where we were only winning, winning by, you know, three points or mm. ten points or something like that. And we were still, like, in our own 40-meter line or something like that and still trying these little dinky kicks out mm. wide, mm. which are great when they come off, mm. but they still weren't coming off at that period of the game. And I was like, that's when I wanted to see us kick to the corners and just squeeze the oh, life out of them. But during that period, what you were talking about, where they looked like they were having a little, you know, getting the bit between their teeth a little bit, yeah. that's when they were able to come back into it. Mm. And if it was another night when they were able to maximise those opportunities, we could have been in trouble all over again. True. The fact of the matter is they dropped those balls, they opened the door wide open, we got a head full of steam. Mm. Once we got over 20 points up, they realised that they weren't going to get back into the game. Mm. Heads dropped, the All Blacks, you know, cocks went up, and <laughs> they just... They played with that they, sense of freedom, right? They did what they do. That's you right. Know, they, they played like All Blacks. I feel like the All Blacks are... Of all the teams in the world, they're an especially dangerous team once they feel like they've got the game in the bag and can just let loose. But a flat track bully sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. because when we do get behind and are forced to chase a game, sometimes we can kind of implode a wee bit. That's kind yeah. of like what happened the week before. Just yeah. trying to force things and then just those basic skills would let us down and then combine with a good Argentinian defence, which yeah, wasn't right. there this week. Yeah, just a couple of little things that... Could have gone their way. They could have swung that whole game. Mm. But, you know, at the end of the day, it was still a 50-point win. And I sound points. like a real prick if I'm pulling that apart a little bit. Like, freaking Rico... Like, I, before I talk about Rico, mm. I've got to talk about a man that I've given a little bit of shit to who I think is a fantastic player. I really do. But just a player that I didn't know whether he needed to be in the squad. You know what I'm going to say? Sam Kane. Mm -hmm. He was... He, was that, was, that was a captain's knock, yep. wasn't it? Like he, he always makes the tackles. That's always been his thing. But he's he, dropped it. He's fallen off a few tackles, important tackles this mm, year. You know, mm. he's got a great work rate and all that sort of thing, but he really, really put in this he weekend. Put him, uh, he had a, just, I don't know, he had a steam up, didn't he? Yeah. He, really he looked did. confident. He was calling for the ball. Um, yeah, getting seeing him running into space was just refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Back like, in Hamilton. Yeah. With was, the cowbells. Stomping ground. Yeah, I thought he yeah, he looked marvellous. What were we going to say about Rico? I thought he looked, looked stunning. For a stat for you. He passed the ball. Uh, he passed the ball. 
if I'm not mistaken, eight times in this Woo! game. Eight times. That's eight times more than Every other know. game together, this rugby championship, it's a grand total of eight. So one game, oh, eight wow. previous games put together, eight. So wow. really chuck And like a lot of them just like those offloads, right? When he was in the middle of a tackle and he was just able to find his man. And Is he the fastest center in the world? He has to be. He's so quick. He's got absolute wheels. Yeah. He's got it's like he, he could play on the wing, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's such a good winger. Yeah, he's a very good winger. Such a good winger. But, you know, he's, he looked very, very good this weekend. What did you think? Um, I was actually going to ask you about the squad that's going to Australia, but you want to hang out on... For the Argentinians, mm. what do you think they're going to take away from this series? The fact they got a win, they had an historic win? I mean, that's still a successful tour. If you'd said to the Argentinians before the tour, you guys are going to get one from two, I think yeah. they would bite your hand off for that. That's yeah. a phenomenal success. Yeah. But... It's got to be a bit deflating with how they capitulated in the second game. I mean, they asked Checker in the post-match, like, do you think the guys just kind of spent all their emotion after that first win and just couldn't back it up? And he basically said, I don't know. That's not something I can measure. Mm. It's but, an honest answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really can't. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Should we do a bit of role play? Okay. Nothing bedroom related. Yeah, I was going to ask so you. you ask me I that. will ask you that question, but you, yeah, fill that bad, bad boy up. You answer as if you're Ian Foster. What? Because I like what I like about Checker is he just tells you what's on his mind. He gives it to you straight. Okay. You know. So the what was the question? Do you think that uh, the Argent- Fozzie, you've come off another loss. <laughs> well, do you think uh, the fact coming off that historic win from the week before? And the energy and effort that went into that game, the, your players were a little bit spent and uh, just couldn't get themselves back up to the mark. Asking this of Checker. Yeah. yeah, no. It, you're, I mean, you're Foster. You're, it's this very convoluted situation. <laughs> I want you, because what I admire about Checker is he gave an honest response. Right. But what would Fozzie say? Put your Fozzie hat on. Oh, if Fozzie was answering a question after his team had capitulated. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> No, they say, look, uh, we had a great week. Yeah, yeah, we prepared really well, and um, yeah, we had good, good, good training and intensity, and obviously we didn't hit the mark tonight. Yeah, uh, right. there's a lot of disappointed boys there. That's right. Uh, Mood in the changing room is not good, but um, but that's yeah, what you want it to be. The, the, these guys are, are proud, and you know they're working really hard, and we appreciate our supporters. Yeah, uh, that's just another marker in the ground for us. That's right. We'll take the lessons or learnings, depending if you want to go full on. I don't think learnings mm-hmm. is a word or. Everyone tells me it's supposed to be lessons. <laughs> all, blacks, all Blacks players love saying learnings. Yeah, we do, don't we? Take well, when learnings. I say we, I'm not an always player, but I said take the learnings. Take the learnings. Take the learnings. It's all a loss, isn't it? Mm. But uh, yeah, another marker in the ground, and I still think we're heading in the right direction. Mm. Despite like the fact that we got beaten by 50 <laughs> points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel bad. Even though uh, Fuzzy was the coach of the team that won by 50, I'm still finding an elaborate way to give Maybe it's just all Joe Schmidt. Because some of those some of those He's in a terrible some of those situation. plays did look a bit kind of Schmidt-esque. Schmitty. They looked a bit Schmitty. Yeah. Mm. Well I'm Did you see the handshake, it. by the way? Should we try and re- do it? Should we um, we, we need a third party though? <laughs> it reminded me of the do you remember the twenty eleven rugby? Uh, yeah, Cup, John, John Key King? and uh, um who's the, the, he- the, the head of the uh, world rugby and then um richard, richard. Oh, yeah 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 well, that was an absolute cluster f yeah of a handshake poor john yeah yeah i yeah. don't really feel sorry for him i think he sold his house for 20 odd million dollars recently oh johnny key you know what's weird about that game i was um uh weird about john key at rugby events he was always in the changing rooms with the all blacks after games did you know that photo of him with Sam Whitelock where he's just towering over him and he yeah. looks like a, he looks like a hobbit. <laughs> a little Lego man. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's under a white man. Oh, God. John Key. <laughs> <laughs> he's still got powers. Yeah. Key's got to get you. Did you get, um, um, did you get your, what are, what are you drinking now? Uh, it's the beer which kind of epitomizes the All Blacks Jekyll in and recent I. times. The old, I'll put this in front of your face. There you go. Side by side. Put it this way. <laughs> I've never looked better. There you go. Yeah. The old Jekyll and Hyde one. You never know what you're going to get. How am I going to drive home? I have to drive home for everyone giving me stick about not drinking enough 9% beer. Woo! You crash on the couch, man. Drive home in the rain. 
It's a good thing it's not too bad. We're not advocating. He's not going to drink too much to where he can't drive, but mm. he'll be fine. Mm. And if you oh, don't, you'll like, we'll, we'll flood you with caffeine or something. Yes. Um, yeah, but look, oh, speaking of handshakes, Pablo Matera and... Well, we, didn't actually talk, we didn't actually talk about the first handshake. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a, it was a class of... Schmitz, well, Ryan, I, and who was the third party? Oh, so well, the other coach. One of those guys that just looks... Like it looked like guy. Jason Ryan, if you missed it, the Ford's coach, had snubbed. Yeah, and he looked like he had a dismissive look on his face yeah. and something else on his mind. But it was... he's. To be fair to Jason Ryan, he's come out in the media and made a big joke of it and said, oh, I yeah. really messed that up. And I yeah. believe him. I don't, yeah, think, I don't, think, there I don't think there was anything. Yeah, me neither. Like, People were asking me about it. No, no I don't it's, think so. This is one of those things. Yeah, yeah. But the one that was malicious, um, you know, speaking Matera and Dane Coles. Because, you know, we look on the other hand of that with um, Eben Etzebeth and Ella, Ella Toa, how they wanted to kill each other on the pitch. With and then after the game. Fire eyes and grappling at eyes, yeah. uh, you know, uh, and then them having that Kodak moment. Yes. That wasn't staged. No, not uh, staged at all. <laughs> Genuine. Rugby this values. Is, this is why we love the game. It's so special. Um, no other sport would do this. <laughs> no other sport would have two human beings. Sharing a beer <laughs> after a... Not closely for game, but okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was odd. And Pablo Matera is really good. He was like chumming it up with all the Crusaders guys, taking photos with them and all that sort of thing. And it comes time to shake Dan Coles' hand, but he doesn't. He just gives him a whack on the arm. Yeah. 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 And like, I loved the, the Dan Coles, what? What? You know, and like... Some people outside New Zealand may not know the reputation that Dan Coles has got. He's a bit of a grub. He's a grub. He's an yeah. absolute grub. Yeah. And... Um, that, that term actually is not widely used, I believe, outside of... Uh, yeah, well, I made my top 10 grub acts. Uh, no, top 10 grubs. Oh, yes. Did and, you call it grubs? Uh, and I said top, yeah, I said top 10 grubs, I think. Then everyone knew what you were talking and about. I said, no, I said on the, on the thumbnail, top 10 grubs, and then on the actual title, I said top 10 dirtiest players. Dirtiest players, players. yeah, basically. Yeah. That's yeah. a grub. That's a grub. A real dirty player. Because they did a survey... Some media thing did a survey of New Zealand rugby players a couple of years ago. It was like, who do you think is the New Zealand's, like, I don't know, like most talented player, fastest player, whatever. And one of them was biggest grub, and it was Dane Coles by a landslide. Oh, the one that I hate that he did was he pulled the hair of that, I mean, who was the Irish player he pulled the hair of at the end of the mm. first test that they won in Ireland, in oh, Dublin. Oh, really? Just as they were kicking out, and there was a um, long haired Irish player, I can't remember the name, he just yanks down I don't his hair that. like a real little bitch. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what you want to see. No, it's not. It's that's not, really not rugby nice. values. No, that's not rugby. They weren't going to have a beer after the game together. Mm. Unless they would. If they did, that would be rugby values. Right. It's a special game. Yes. It's a special game. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing Pablo had. Probably decent reason not to want to shake his Do you reckon it probably went back to something that had the Crusaders um, Cains? Cains, maybe. Maybe he just doesn't maybe, like him. Maybe. Did you hear what Fozzie said after it? There's lots of people who don't want to shake Dan Coles' hand. Basically. Good one, Moana. Yeah. Defuse the tension. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got a few of them in him, Fozzie. Yeah, a little bit of... That's a, I always thought he was just wildly uncharismatic, but as he... This part's a little warming to me. They warm a lot more to me after a while. After a 50-point win. Yeah. Seems like a much better coach. Does this take the pressure off of you again? Are we just for this, now? This, it's just this, the one week got us, right? The last wavering, game. hot and cold, you know, transition of all this sort of crap. And like, if he loses a Melbourne, the heat's all back, back on. on. Back and to square one, basically. If he loses a Melbourne, which I can see him doing midweek game, it's going to be weird. It's a Thursday, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, of the AFL. Was it you that told me that? I was in the chat okay. inside. Um, by the way, when I watched the game, I was wasn't just watching the game by myself. I was live streaming one of the best in the business. Uh, to, actually, I'm talking about your dad. My dad, who <laughs> loves the Kiwi lads. Yeah, he does. He's a, he's a real fanboy of the Kiwi lads. Yeah, my dad's never talked anywhere near like about my stuff as much as he's talked about the Kiwi lads. Like you're fine and all, but the Kiwi lads. Yeah. Are you gonna do anything with there that was, guy? There was one of the comments that said, "Hey, I love the podcast." Or something like that on the chat, and you were like, "Yeah, oh, yeah, thanks." So Tony's actually in here at the moment, and then you and your mum was like, "Oh, you're doing a podcast." Yeah. So that's my mum impression. And then your dad said, "Ah, I, I tried to watch it. It was an hour." <laughs> What about those Kiwi lads? Basically. I'm a subscriber of them. Yeah. Like them. He loves the Kiwi lads. Can you tell me, this is more of a Gaza chat. Okay. Because I think that's why the people are really here for a Gaza chat. Gaza True. is um, Mark's father. father. Yeah. Why was he um, uh, dismissed from the ground watching a college rifles game? What did he do? 
Oh, yelling at the ref. Well, what did you yell? It's I don't actually know. I wasn't there. Would have been a few F bombs in there, maybe? For sure. Yeah? You let some loose. My dad, my when dad I used to a... go watch games with him, I would kind of want to hide under a rock because he was just yeah, mate. torrents of abuse. Yeah. And they had a Greek Cypriot mate, Luggy, who was just as bad, <laughs> if not worse, and they just played <laughs> off each other. Like, we would sit on the terraces back when Eden Park had terraces. Yeah. And, like, the two of them would be there, and there would just be, like, this empty space around them as they would just go <laughs> ballistic at the officials my, and the players. My old man was the same. Really? He really was. He used to really go off at refs. He never met a ref that he didn't think was not against it. Right. You know, they were all biased. They were either, like, we were Maris fans. They right. hated the Catholics. Right. Or Harbour fans. They hated the boys from the other side of the bridge. Right. From playing Auckland. Right, right. Uh, Blues fans, everybody hates Auckland. For sure. Uh, and All Blacks fans, uh, they're never going to give the All Blacks a chance. You know, mm-hmm. the refs are never going to be on our side. So right. he had a reason for why every single ref was, was terrible. Right. Bloody great man. Wonderful fella. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just was not, and just vocal about it on the side. For his too. birthday, I bought my dad one of those swish things where you yeah. can get a sports celebrity to send a personalized message. And I got right. Ben O'Keefe. To uh, he must send get a lot of he mustn't get a lot of requests on it. He's only like I think it was twenty bucks. He's one of the cheap. <laughs> he's one of the cheaper ones you can get. How much would it all that cost you? I think Aaron Smith was the most expensive. He was like hundred and fifty. Wow, right. Yeah. So I went. I went. I went. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Ben O'Keefe. And what after that one message, Ben O'Keefe basically said to my dad because I said to Ben what O'Keefe in the limited message I can send him that basically my dad likes giving refs stick. Yeah, right. And that Ben O'Keefe said, well, if you're in your 70s and you've been get, given ref stick for all these years, just fair play, keep going. Right. And after that one video, minute long, whatever it was, Dad kind of warmed to Ben O'Keefe. Oh, right. Until the next game, Ben O'Keefe <laughs> ref, and where my dad just kind of slayed him once again. No, he's he's awful. He's a dog. Yeah, he's a dog, basically. <laughs> yeah, he's gone awful. So, um, Sorry, yeah. Ben O'Keefe, if you want this, I know you're a big Two Cents Distracted yeah. fan. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. warm feelings, they, they didn't last. Yeah, well, yeah, it happens. It happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, dear. But, but no, he's good value and a huge, as you say, huge Kiwi Lads. Yeah. Very big Kiwi Everybody Lads. should go subscribe to the Kiwi Lads. Kiwi Lads, best commentary. Yeah, exactly. Outside of, I mean, well, on you YouTube anyway. You actually want to stay up to date with some, like, I'm not going to, I don't think live streaming is my game. But I've done it a couple of times. But I can't call a game. I can't call a game. I just talk bollocks while watching the game. Yeah, yeah. It's well, like if we were sitting down watching the game, the way I would talk to you is the yeah, way I just yeah, talk exactly. on the street. But if but you can't watch a game... If you don't have Super Sport or Sky Sports or whatever it is... And if you want to hear a South Islander in the early 20s call a game beautifully... Yeah. He's then the man. Kiwi Lats. Absolutely. 100%. Amen. 100%. What a plug we just given him. That would give him a good 10 subscribers there. Kiwi Kiwi Lats. Yeah. But um, no, the win was good. Argentinians, disappointing. Yeah, um, different team. Very much. Um, Rico was good. Like we said, Kane was good. Guys who you wanted, even Harvey, who um, a lot of people give a lot of stick. He actually looked pretty good with, off the boot. Yeah, he exactly. A few good nice. kicks and had a hand in a couple of the tries. I mean, it's there were so many tries, it's like how much weight you put on it. But When are we going to pull the trigger? Yeah, that ring's really coming down. Mm. Pull the trigger and put Will Jordan at 15. Because that's the one thing I would really love to see. Will they try Jordy at 12, maybe? Yeah. He likes 12. He wants yeah. to play. He's been wanting to play 12 since La Mape was at the Canes, but he mm. couldn't get a kick at 12 because La Mape was there. Yeah, he'd probably be He's pretty... He's a big guy. Yeah. He's got the skills. He's got the size. Playing outside his brother. Ooh. Yeah, he'd look pretty good, I reckon. Um, they also I feel once again I feel sorry for Roger to have asked the Sheik he's not even going to Australia to play some MPC what do you think is going on there do you think he's just at training he's just getting out classed or coaches haven't seen enough to warrant a selection maybe he gets a gig when they come back and play Eden Park if we win the first one but that is quite possibly going to be a rugby championship decider yeah deflating deflating for him like I think he would really just benefit from some game time so probably the right thing did they select him Purely as a PR stunt, mm, I, you'd have to be. There's su- su- a factor. Yeah, definitely, you'd have to. He had to that. have been told when he signed to come over to Union that he was going to be fast track. He's one of the only players I can ever imagine like signing for the NZR. And when he was signing, the Australian media were reporting it. He signed for the All Blacks. Right. Who the Sunny Bill was the only other guy who got to yeah. just waltz into All Blacks camp without any kind of you know. 
he played pretty well for Canterbury in that one small season that he had before he made it, and he was obviously real quality. But do not say Roger Tuivasa Sheik did a lot of good things for the Blues he this did. year. He did enough um, to make the All Blacks ahead of some of the other midfielders, though. That's the question mark, I guess. Uh, it's yeah. a few young guys who kind of missed out. Yeah, but it's so weird to hear, like, before he had even played a game of Union for like ten years or yeah. whatever, where he played uh, developments for the Blues, didn't he? Yeah, a long time ago. Way back when. To say you're signing for the All Blacks. That's... It's not a thing you sign for. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can start a club rugby and work your way up. Basically. Yeah, basically. But, yes. nah. So, I guess they haven't seen enough from him to warrant the selection. And, I mean, Fozzie talked about wanting to give Harvey and Yuani more time together to basically yeah. build that cohesion which only comes through game time. Yeah, absolutely. Get that sort of Martin Otto Conrad Smith kind basically. of thing into it. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. funny, though, because, I mean... Ben Darwin, the former Wallaby, he runs some stats company and he's he's a massive, like almost cultish believer in cohesion yeah. being like the number one telling factor as to which team is going to win a game. Mm. Like he looks back to the the Wallabies back in the day when they were successful, how they only had three super rugby teams and a lot mm. of the Brumbies guys played like club rugby together. So they all knew each other for like, you know, 10 years before they hit Wallabies level. And then the Wallabies don't make any changes or make one change on the best last week and they got smashed. Yeah, so it's not... The be all and end all, but yeah, yeah but I do agree with Fozzie. They do need to build some cohesion, but I don't know. There's um, a bit of a, just a question mark about Roger. What's yeah. he doing? Yeah, what is he doing? I wonder what he's thinking about this whole situation. I think he's he's a strong character, and he, mm. he won't let it phase him too much, and he'll continue to put his best foot forward. Mm. I'm sure he's trying to do everything he possibly can to be the best player he possibly can be. But um, the other guy who seems to be pretty out of favour at the moment is old... Hoskins Ang- Tutu. Hoskins Tutu is one of them, but I was actually going to talk about Angus Tarbell. Yeah. After having a bit of a dog crap game against uh, South Africa in game one mm. over there, he hasn't had a look-in. That's the right. Or but I mean, our other props have been doing all right. So De Groot. it's... Groot. De Groot's my even, man at the moment. Even um, Lomax. Yeah. Who's one of the guys who I personally have given a lot of stick. Lomax always seems to be... Like, I'm not going to say he's an attacking threat, but he's a really always in a good position in terms of being a, an attacking decoy. Right. They seem to play a lot of off the back of him, and like second, you know, two-man plays in motion off the back right. of him. Even a few tries that came off on the weekend. I always I was just watching. I was like, Lomax is in so many of these in pictures. Moments, right. You know, I just like, never liked his scrummaging. Hmm. I just thought his scrummaging was average, but he's improved a lot. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember watching Offutu Mufasi at club level with my dad a few years ago and was like, geez, this guy's not good enough for the Blues. And then he yeah. went and made the All Blacks. So, you know, I guess well, they can genuinely get better with proper What's coaching. happened to Offa? Who's he? Did he not travel? There's a few guys like Malala was injured, Goodhue's injured. Yeah. I can't remember if Off was on that list. I feel like he didn't travel what's, to South Africa. What's the, but... what's the guy who looks like an island version of, of Mario? You know, um, oh, Tuna Kwafi. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to France. So All right, because he played, because everyone was like, why is he playing against Ireland? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, they just yeah. put him in there because they were worried about the threat. I think front. they didn't back like De Groot, because De Groot wasn't even in the squad no. for the Irish series, and no. now he's pretty much out of starting and losing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So he was just put in there to, like, as a bit of an insurance policy. That Basically, he's got the work. experience. Yeah. Good mustache, though. I love a mustache. Yeah. Love, and, you know, I always say that if you get a little Duty Sanchez, Pono mustache, anything you got going on, you get extra points from me. Nick White must be your favourite player. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, he must be able to do some business for that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Class, class, class. Classy stuff. Um, also, there was a lot of people last week in the comments uh, impressed that I got you to say one swear word. Oh, right. And I did tell you that I was going to bleep it out. And, uh, and then you didn't. So you're on the on the internet saying... That well, to be fair, during the live streams, I've been known to, to swear a wee bit. I try to keep yeah. it... I try to keep it G-rated for the for the regular videos yeah. just because I know some people watch with, like, kids in the background yeah, and stuff, sure. so... Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, All Blacks, top of the log, 10 points... But the next best team is on nine points. Two points. I remember saying, how amazing is this? Everyone's got one win apiece. This has never happened. Now everyone's got two, two wins apiece. Like, it's just madness. It's good for the competition. It is. It is good for the comp- competition. It keeps all the all the fans interested. That's right. You know? There shouldn't be any empty seats, although there were a few empty seats in Hamilton. Well, the weather was just... The weather was diabolical. Absolutely. I can imagine. If you had a ticket that night, do you think you would have gone... 
Uh, yeah. I would have gone because I'm stingy. If I paid the money for it, well, I'm gonna, gone. What if you got a ticket for you and your kids, right? So you first all that game, you want to have a good experience. Your daughter's got a sniffle. Your your son's had a, had a long day and he's in a bit of a grouch. The weather is absolutely packing you could, up. You could forgive people for not going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, week off now, absolutely. and then back into it. We made mugs of ourselves last time by thinking about who's the favorite at the moment. Are we going back to the All Blacks oh, being the favorites? This is an impossible game to impossible competition to predict anything. But yeah, okay. <laughs> All Blacks. All Blacks. We're back we won by 50 points. I think I've got a sneaking suspicion that we will lose in Melbourne, though. Like, I can't trust this team. What do Kiwis live in Melbourne? They should do. Be, it should be almost yeah, like a home away yeah, from home. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot of Kiwis in Melbourne. But um, I think it's one of those things that the old dead cat bounces and the Wallabies will be hurting after that last game and they'll, and they'll be knowing that this is their best chance against a really erratic All Black team mm. to finally get old bled back. And for them to even have a shot at it, they've got to win in Melbourne. Mm. So if they don't win in Melbourne, you know, it's it's everything's on the line for them this year. Because no matter what happens this year, if they get the Bledisloe Cup back, this will be a successful season for them. That'll be disastrous for the All Blacks. Oh, absolutely right? disastrous. But I think they'll be really up for the fight. Um, it's got all the makings of a great test match. Mm. The, the All Blacks really have to show that they can back up. They haven't won two consecutive games mm. since when? Since who did they who did they play before they played the Irish and the Wales? Queen? Wales and they must have played like Italy, Wales and Italy. I think so. Far out. Mm. It's a long time ago. Mm. And then we went one on one with the Wallabies and the South Africans right. last year. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. been a what? It's, not getting a lot of twos on the trot at the moment. No, that's right. And for those people who are having twos with the trots right now, we appreciate you. Enjoy it. Yeah. Hope it's going well for you. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Smoother than a gravy sandwich. Yeah. Um, and the South Africans are going to travel to Argentina for the first game. Yeah. That's one where they need to bounce back. Yeah. Big time. And I can see the I can see the Sappers using losing that one in Argentina. Potentially. Oh, Argentina is literally a team who can beat the All Blacks away from home one week and then lose by 50 the next. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Who no, knows? Who knows? It's just such an erratic. Nothing's competition. really inconceivable at this point. Absolutely. What is real? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. in the Matrix. Basically, you're just listening to us because hopefully this is relatively entertaining to listen to, but we really have no we idea. We really have no idea. No idea. Yep. Yep. Like, I'm not a betting man. I don't try not to lay any punts down, and I'm glad I'm not at this yep. point. It's you know, a bit of a mugs game at the moment. It is a mugs game. Mm. Speaking of what's not a mugs game, though, the women's game. Tell me about the women's okay, um, Me and uh, Mark were talking about this before. Mm. We were like, talking about topics we're going to talk about, which is always a very loose list. It's just basically the games that we're on. Basically. And then he'll say one other thing. Last week it was Nick White's dive. Yep. This week is the women's game, in particular, um, old Cox Room. Kendra Coxich. I called her the wrong name. Kendra Coxedge. Coxedge. I called her Coxedge. I was wondering if that was just a joke I didn't get. I called her, I called her Cox Rim. I don't know what's on your mind. But she's a good player. And her name is Coxedge. Okay, this is my point. Okay, I want to know some stuff from you about the women's game because yeah. I'm a huge fan of rugby. I love the game, followed it my entire life. Um... And, and but I really only followed the men's game. Yeah, I do not know the next thing about the women's game, and I I don't say that as a slight to the women's game, uh, but I just it, you don't get the same access to the mm. game. I know that they're pushing it a lot more, but you know there's only so much time in a day, there's yeah. so much time in a weekend. I have never, I don't think I have ever can honestly say this. I want to change this, and I hope you can change it. If you're someone like me, I, th- I employ you to do the same thing. I don't think I've ever sat through 80 minutes of the women's game. Right. I, I don't think I have. Right. Like, even the recent games. I've watched little bits, highlights here and there. Right. But I don't think I have. So, uh, I thought potentially we could maybe come back to the women's game a little bit more. Well, the, we World, could, the World Cup's this We year. could all educate ourselves a little bit more about the women's game. So, let's talk about Cox Edge. She's that blonde halfback who's incredible, yeah? Yeah, basically. I mean, I'm only really one step ahead of you in the women's game. I probably started watching women's stuff, I want to say, 18 months, two years ago. Basically, during 
when there was no games on, there was yeah. the COVID thing going on. There was no games on. I was sitting down and doing a live stream like on a Wednesday and just watching old games. We would watch right. like the 87 or 89 or 87 final yeah. and um, like just random old games. And then uh, April suggested watch one of the women's games. So I watched yeah. like, I think it was like the Black Ferns against the USA or something. Yeah. And it was just like, holy crap, this game is, it's fast. Yeah. It's... Is it a bit because, like, is because it a bit like watching? Um, it's like watching games from I want to say the nineties in the men's game because the women's game is only now on the cusp of getting into professional, yeah, paid sport. There's just not like the same things that we see. Like in the men's game, you look at a player and you can probably go, "You're a prop. Yeah. You're a lock." You know, you can look at a person and generally tell you're this position. Yeah, not to look at me and they go, "You're a piece of shit." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's the first thing I said to you, I think, when I met you, right? Um, but, yeah, and it's, like, a lot less kicking. Huh? Like, in a men's game, you will easily see one team kick is it 30 just, times. Is it just due to the fact that when they do punt the ball, you know, you're not getting the same, same distance? Same I don't distance. know. They just don't. There's a lot more running. And it's a, it just team. generally feels, like, a lot quicker. It's a bit like watching first of Dan Rugby. Kind of, yeah. Because I love watching fish. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. definitely fast-paced. And, um, yeah, like I said, I've been following it for a wee while. I'm certainly whew, far from it. I take all the advice I can get, like which players to look out for. Um, the things I've kind of established is that, like, England are currently the big powerhouse team. Yeah. I think they've been professional the longest. They've got a pretty good domestic they've, competition over there. I know they pounded us at the end of last year. And uh, that's the one thing that I think if we play them at the World Cup, we'll struggle because their set piece is just phenomenal. We didn't yeah. really get that test against the Aussies. Because yeah, right. the Aussies are still, I think, fully amateurs. They've, the... got, they've got some serious coaches behind the Black Ferns at the moment, don't they? That's right. Like Wayne Smith. That's right. You know, former All Black coach. That's right. You know, I think Ted's involved in something. That's right. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, these girls have only just been given professional contracts in the last, I think, six to 12 months. Yeah, play. So, but I mean, Kendra Cox said she's announced she's going to retire at the end of the year. So basically after the World Cup. Yeah. I, saw and, a, I saw a tweet from Squidge saying that there's been more tests that she's been playing at number that's right. nine that haven't. Yeah, she's, she's played more tests. She's played for more than half of the Black Ferns. So basically we're saying if, test forever. If this pie is all the games that the Black Ferns have played, she's played more the, than half of that this pie. This much of that pie. Yeah, basically. And if you are listening to that, I just did a wonderful, wonderful visual diagram. With his hands. Spectacular. Magician. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, no, she's a really good player. If she was if she was a man, like, she would have been, I don't know, like, maybe, nice maybe not quite like a Dan Carter level, but, like, in that neighborhood, like, just absolute regular. Brendan Leonard? Probably better than Brendan Leonard. <laughs> But you know what? That I mean? was a like, funny old reference. I was just trying to think of like a random, random number nine halfbacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know she plays halfback, Hattie but Ripper. she she cooks the goals. Yeah, but I mean, she Hattie just Ripper kicked the goals. He did for a while. Yeah, twenty eleven World Cup. That's oh, yeah, right. Boy. That's right. And he was kicking well until the World Cup final. Oh, and he missed. He had a dunger. That's right. He needed pressure a goal. goal. We did. Beaver. John Preston. Would she be a John Preston? I still think she's. Well, yeah. John Preston had a great game in '96 in the. Sorry, I'm talking about the old '96 games here. Uh, so she's a she's a great. She's a Basically, she's great. a great. She's a Black Ferns great. Okay, so look, like, probably you, you top Brendan Lynn and John Preston. She's more in the realms of our Richie McCalls and our Dan Carters for the women's game. Yeah, I'm trying to think who would be the equivalent from back when the men's game was still largely amateur. Like maybe like a Grant Fox or someone yeah, like that. Right. You know what I mean? Just like an absolute regular, absolute guaranteed starter. I mean, for the most part, she's getting on now, so she's not always starting, and they need to build a bit of depth. But yeah, she's going to retire at the end of the World Cup. I feel bad for her that she she's played most of her career in the amateur game. But I mean, she's got to get some kind of coaching role, media role, something. She's she needs some kind of reward for like all her service, basically. Should we put the hat around? What does that mean? Or like you know that church? Oh, put the hat around. Okay, I don't go to church. <laughs> I'm there all the time. I I just take a break from this from church to these, basically. I'm right. all animal boys at church. All right, so okay, so England's the favourite. Uh, France is very good. France is very good. So the very, Black Ferns play some great running rugby. So but pretty, it's pretty standard for a New Zealand team. I right? don't think we've been tested at set piece is the one thing that we might come into We're issues. lacking on just being a little bit professional. Basically, we've only had the professional set up very recently compared to like France and England, who are at the moment, England is streets ahead. And then I we think are the world game. champions though, aren't we? 
I think so. I didn't watch the last women's World Cup, uh, but I think so. We've won it multiple times. I know Ruby Chui too because she's like she's it's, the interview. She's the media darling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I certainly don't know all the players. Either. Well, let's learn together, everybody. So the World Cup is this year, and it's in New Zealand, and there's some games at Waitakere Stadium. Well, should we go along? To we some, should, Mark. We should. We'll do. Uh, we'll see if we can get, uh, get some. Well, should we try to get some female athletes? Get some ladies up in this. We place. need to get some some media passes. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, come on. YouTube's legit. Definitely. You know, exactly. We've got New Zealand's biggest rugby YouTuber and New Zealand's 18th biggest rugby YouTuber here. You're not quite as good as the Kiwi lads, are no, you? No, I'm not quite as good as the Kiwi lads, to be fair. Not just, ask, my dad. Just, just ask Gaza. That being said, he's probably got them ahead of me as well. Oh, God. Well, they've got a few subscribers. 15, 16, 17, something like that. Mm. I don't mean 17 people on there. On the thousand. That must be the media people they throwing us out passes already. I think it's your wife telling you to get home for better call Saul. Maybe. But, okay. um, yeah, no, the Women's World Cup is this year and it's going to be massive. I think England will win it. Tell us if you want us to make a regular feature out of the women's game. You know? Learning it's that. still going to have to do one that it's, it's growing. It's still very much... And it's, I don't want to say infancy, it's a growing market. You can't say infancy. Like, yeah. if there are people like me who are obsessed with the game, who know bugger all about it, that's wrong, you know? And I don't know if that's, my thing is like, do I want to, if a game's on and I've only got like, you know, one game I can watch that day, that game and it's going to be, it's almost like and I'm weighing up to whether I watch it, North Harbour versus right. Southland or the Wallaroos versus the Black Fans. Right. And I'm like, all my heart and my history is with North Harbour. Right, I've watched right, right. them my entire life and all that sort of thing. And, and what's the better product and all that sort of jazz. But yeah. I think I think for us to actually make a legitimate effort to grow the game, to get higher and higher quality athletes and higher and higher quality games, yeah. but the onus is on rugby fans to watch a bit more. That's right. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it is a different game. Like I yeah. said, it's, it's not played... The same way, but how are the hits? Well, I've seen there, there are some hits. Some decent, ahead. decent big hits. There's some big yeah. units out there who who flatten people. <laughs> Don't say that about a lady. I reckon it's a compliment. If you're a rugby player prop and I'm calling you a big unit, I am giving you the stamp of two cents approval. Yeah. You're a big unit. <laughs> Power to you. You flatten I, those little half. There's still a woman. I feel like it's so dangerous to call a no. woman a big unit. If you're a rugby player, you're a unit. Right. You're a unit. You're a unit. I think another woman can call. It. Uh, uh, another woman a big unit who's also a big unit potentially if I'm out of line calling someone a, a, big, woman, unit, a big unit I think it's like a ginger not. can only call another ginger ginger kind of situation you know I want to call them big units if they are on the rugby field and they're flattening other players with just sheer mass but yeah. I would just say they're destructive she's a destructive unit doesn't doesn't roll off the tongue quite as well does it okay yeah let me know. If I'm being offensive, I don't want to do that. But it's a compliment. It comes from a good place. Seriously. Yeah, but I know what you mean. I mean, when I watched the Women's Six Nations this year, I kind of watched the men's games on the weekend and the women's games were played on the weekend as well, but I caught them up on like a Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. And one good thing about the women's games is because there's not the same demand for it, the games are often really easy to find. Like People upload them to YouTube and they don't get copyright yeah. struck kind of thing. So the access is actually pretty easy to get a hold of. So... That's why, you know, the NZR might give us an extra shot to cover it. Okay. Because they need some actual co press coverage. Yeah. Because they basically, you've tried to get press passes. The biggest rugby YouTuber in New Zealand. Shut down. Shut down. Well, you're the second biggest rugby YouTuber in the world. Behind dismissed. Squid, behind Squid, yeah. Independent one, I guess, yeah. Yeah, look at that guy. Dismissed. Uh, dismissed. By the blues of all people. My team. Bastard. Show me your bona fides. They said. Show me your bone. No. <laughs> So I'm very mature. We know this. Uh, okay. Well, look, I feel like we've covered some ground today. Another six years. We've got a week off from the rugby championship. So yeah, I think absolutely. the premiership is starting this weekend. All right. The NPC. Is that what you're talking about? No, oh, yeah. no. The Eng Eng English rugby. Oh, God. This is, this is another area I need to be educated. Oh, yeah. Officially, Munster is my team. I'm sorry. Um, I don't play the premiership. That's URC. Oh, son of a... Well, just... Oh, God. I'm 
Screw on the poach all over the show here. Wasps, aren't they? Bristol, Leicester Wasps. Tigers. Warren um, Gatlin used to coach coach Wasp back in the day. Right, yeah. I like the look of Harlequins. 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 He said to me, he's a big Leinster man. He's a big Leinster man, but I got an answer because I'm, I'm uh, my people are from County Cork, and I got someone saying, if you don't support Munster, your ancestors are going to haunt you. Right. And um, your hands are tied. Yeah. So basically, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a Munster fan, I guess. But then, uh, yeah, Mark Dunphy said he'd send me a, a Leinster jersey. Oh, really? Uh, I, I don't You're need torn. that. Yeah. Well, it'd be nice, but like, thanks, Mark. But um, I'm, he's Mun- Munster. I'm a Munster, Munster man. Munster. 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 Munster in the blood. Nothing much you can do about that. You can take antibiotics for it, but not much else, really. Right, eh? Fantastic. I hope he does. Yeah. How long have we been running this? Don't know. We while. Oh, I think we're over an hour. Okay. Oh. Good chat. Fantastic chat. We should do this yeah. again. I, I think, well, that's the nature of podcasts. I guess you've got to keep it coming. What do we do? Line. Do we do a. Um, do we do a preview to the next round? We kind of already done a preview to the next round. Or do do we just wrap up the round after the All Blacks play? And we can know, see if there's yeah, I'm sure there'll be something to talk about. Right. Well, it's been fun, and just remember uh, that we are on the major podcast platforms now. So Spotify, Apple, Apple, Apple iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, anywhere else really where you want to find. Not Greg. Pandora. Well, maybe we are, but I was struggling myself with old Pandora. Uh, yeah, and also, um, feel if, you, if you're on a platform that enables you to give a bit of a rating and a review, please give us a nice rating or review. Or if you really hated this, just probably don't say anything. Just keep that to yourself. We probably haven't watched this far. Yeah, if you like hated it. this and you're over an hour into it, what's wrong with you? What's Stop wrong with watching. you? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I can't give you back this hour. You can't be done. Fantastic. All right. Go subscribe to uh, Two Cent Therapy. Two beers today. How about that? Go drive. Nine percent. You must be on your couch. Go <laughs> watch that film. Mm. All right, very good. Take care, everybody. Hurrah. Right.